हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई से अकेडमी In this lecture, let us understand collector feedback bias and collector emitter feedback bias. First, let us understand collector feedback bias. Figure shows the collector feedback bias circuit. Here, base will be the input terminal and collector will be the output terminal. From the output, there is a feedback to the input. That's why it is known as collector feedback bias. This type of biasing. is used to get a stable q point here a voltage is fed back to the base to neutralize any change in collector current if collector current increases then the collector voltage decreases which in turn decreases the base current which will oppose the original change in collector current here the voltage is fed back to base to neutralize any change in collector current if collector current increases then voltage across the collector will decrease if voltage across the collector decreases the base current will decrease so this in turn opposes the change in collector current here we can write ie is equal to vcc minus vbe divided by rc plus rb divided by beta dc and the voltage vb will be equal to 0.7 and vc can be given as vcc minus ic rc here if rb is equal to beta dc rc then the q point will be in the middle of the load line so if we say middle of the load line which means the transistor will be operating in active region this biasing is more efficient than emitter feedback biasing if we say efficient which means q point is more stable but this circuit is sensitive to change in temperature so collector feedback bias is more efficient than emitter feedback bias if we say efficient which means q point is more stable the collector feedback circuit is sensitive to change in temperature this is one of the drawback of collector feedback biasing now let us understand collector emitter feedback bias figure shows the collector emitter feedback bias circuit the difference between collector feedback and collector emitter feedback bias circuit is that we are adding resistor across the emitter terminal so this will provide the required negative feedback to the circuit and q point will be more stable the collector bias and emitter bias does not have enough negative feedback hence to obtain the required negative feedback the collector emitter feedback circuit is used it is the combination of both collector feedback and emitter feedback bias so using only collector feedback and only emitter feedback biasing does not have enough negative feedback that's why collector emitter feedback circuits are used it is the combination of both collector feedback and emitter feedback bias circuit the emitter current can be given as ie is equal to vcc minus vbe divided by rc plus re plus rb divided by beta dc the emitter voltage ve can be written as i e r e and voltage vb can be given as ve plus 0.7 volt and voltage vc can be written as vcc minus ic rc this is about collector feedback bias and collector emitter feedback bias hope you have understood the topic thank you